This week on HomeKit News, new IKEA lighting and sensors with Matter Over Thread. Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at three IKEA devices starting with this new smart bulb, but I'm going to let my Swedish colleague pronounce the name. Take it away, Jan. IKEA Kai Platz. So this is just one of a series of smart bulbs you can buy, ranging from full colour and white bulbs to filament and GU10 bulbs, all with matter over thread. The one I have today is currently only available in parts of Europe, but is sold at an incredibly low price of just under €8, Euros, with US pricing going to be similar, I suspect. This is of course a matter device, but specifically matter over thread. This particular bulb offers 800 lumens of brightness from cool to warm whites, and unfortunately for me, although I was prepared for this, it only works on 220 to 240 volts. When the US version comes out, I do plan to replace my existing filament bulbs in the kitchen, namely these old ST19 bulbs from Philips Hue. So I hope we don't have to wait too long. So that's the bulb, so onto the first sensor. Uh, Jan? IKEA MIGBET. This is IKEA's new contact sensor, once again priced at just eight euros or US dollars, and once again with matter over thread. Conveniently, this uses a single AAA battery, which are easy to find. And last but not least is IKEA Clipbook. The company's own leak sensor, again priced at just under eight euros or eight US dollars, and this sensor uses two AAA batteries, so once again, very convenient. Let's now have a quick look in the box for this bulb, and the first QR code is for the IKEA app, if required, and from there a manual that contains the Matter QR code. Finally to the bulb itself, which also contains an instance of the Matter code on the base. Now I have heard some people have had issues with the new IKEA products, so let's see how easy this is to set up in Apple Home. I've already got the bulb plugged in and ready to turn on. The matter code is ready and I've got the Apple Home app already open. So I just select add accessory and scan the QR code and see how we get on. As you can see, the bulb begins to flash, which is a good sign. And that worked first time, which is good considering the amount of issues I've heard about from others. I'll go through the remaining steps, but notice it's already compatible with adaptive lighting, which is great. Now that's all done, let's have a quick look at the basics. So I can turn adaptive lighting off if I wish, which then lets me adjust the colour temperature right here. The warm white is pretty warm and the cool white is pretty decent, and I can even switch between presets like so. All good so far. Let's go a little deeper now and see how fast the bulb reacts to changes. Switching to different colour temperatures seems really fast, I have to say, with barely any lag at all. The same seems to go for adjustments to brightness, although it's typically harder to distinguish between 10% and 1% brightness, which is common and certainly not surprising for an $8 bulb in reality. Other than that, there's nothing else unique, aside from the option to add this to other matter ecosystems, of course, via the settings. Let's crack open the package for these two sensors now. And remember, you need to provide your own batteries. Starting with the contact sensor, this comes with the basic parts you'd expect for a contact sensor with the main body and the magnet. And it all feels well made, especially for the price. Both come with 3M double-sided sticker tape on the back, and the main body also comes with the matter code in digits on one side. For scanning, the manual comes with the QR code if required. To get into this sensor to add your single AAA battery, you first need to remove the mount to get access to the battery compartment cover. All a lot easier than accessing some other sensors I won't mention. Let's put this all back together for now until we test it out and move on to the leak sensor. Once again, we get the manual and the device itself, which not only has the matter code in digits, but also a QR code in this case. If it's too hard to scan, you can still use the code on the manual, of course. The battery compartment is even easier to access on this occasion, as you can see, and it takes two AAA batteries. I'll close it up for now, but you can see that the leak sensor contacts on the base for detecting leaks. This also differs from something like the Akara leak sensor, for example, in that it also has a built-in siren. 
I'll now set up the contact sensor to make sure it adds first time just like the bulb did. And once you insert the battery, the LED begins to glow. Installation went through first time again. And as this is a contact sensor with many uses, you can display it as a door, a garage door, a window, a generic contact sensor, or even as blinds. If I go into settings, you can see it shows this state as well as the battery level. All the basics you need really. So let's test out this one for reaction times as well. And I've got this set up here with the settings page to reflect the state of the sensor, which is currently open. Reaction times seem consistent with Thread and Zigbee devices, which are generally pretty fast. And so there's no noticeable delay, just as I'd expect. However, to some extent, you do need to ensure that the grooves found in both parts do line up for consistency. Although, as you can see, there seems to be a fair bit of leeway in this regard, although not as consistently. Now, I've already installed the leak sensor, so I won't go through the installation again, but what's really good is that once installed, and it went through first time, if we go into the settings for the sensor, you can see that there's an update available directly within Apple Home. So no hub or app needed, other than Apple Home. I'll update now, and whilst it's downloading and subsequently installing, the device does briefly go offline, understandably. Now that's installed, and I'm also notified as such, which is great. I'll now test out the leak sensor, and for this I've got a small dish, the sensor itself of course, a small jug of water, and the Home app so I can see any notifications. Now just to warn you, especially if you're wearing headphones, this siren is loud, so please adjust your volume accordingly. The sensor goes into the dish, followed by some water. I won't say any more, and I'll let the response speak for itself. On to the pros and cons now, and I have to say I don't see any cons at all. But starting with prices, which for many are seemingly under $10, this brings smart home tech finally within the reach of even the most budget restricted households. Now, Matter Over Thread is the name of the game here. And so if you have a thread border router and a Matter controller, which you're almost certainly going to have if you're an Apple home user, you're all set for using these. It's also good to see easy to purchase AAA batteries in use here, which doesn't massively seem to impact the size of the devices. So that's a definite plus. Now, as these are matter over thread, you don't need to use the company's own Dirigera hub if you don't want. And it seems there aren't even any specific features missing if you don't. Now, I was pleasantly surprised to see an update directly in Apple Home. So I hope this is the future for more devices going forward and not just IKEAs. Although I've only covered one bulb today, the range IKEA offers, whilst much the same as their Zigbee versions, does offer a decent selection. So it's really hard to complain, especially for the price. So that's our brief look at just a few of the new offerings from IKEA's new Matter Over Thread range. Are any of these devices something you're planning on getting? And if you already have any, do let me know your experiences so far by letting me know in the comment section below. And remember, if you've got any questions on this or any of my other videos, ask away and I'll always reply. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, show some love by giving it a like, share if you can, and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It just remains for me to leave you with a festive quote this time, and so Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody.